All right, for today we're gonna do something a little different. I'm gonna video me making my homemade lasagna recipe. This is what we're gonna have for Thanksgiving dinner tonight. I'm not a fan of turkey, not really a fan of ham, so I'm gonna make my homemade lasagna. And I do different variations of this uh, depending on the occasion and how much work I wanna put into it, but we're going all out tonight. Here are a few of the ingredients. I'll put a um, full list of the ingredients in the description of the video so you don't have to uh, try to catch it all right now but you can see we're going to use a pound of ground beef uh, Spanish or yellow onion I like this uh, La San Marjano I'm probably saying it wrong uh, sauce you can get this in Amazon or our local grocery store carries this it's pretty expensive but I talk about that a little further in the video some different seasonings, um, white wine and some whole milk, and we'll get into those details as we start. But uh, appreciate you watching. This is really good lasagna. I'm looking forward to having it. Uh, we're going to have it probably a couple times over the weekend uh, here for Thanksgiving. But um, I did this so I could have this recipe up on my own YouTube channel with my subtle variations that make it mine. Um, and uh, thanks for watching. All right, we'll get started. So I mounded the flour. I got four eggs, some tomato pesto, some kosher salt, extra flour, some measuring spoons. Got my cutter. Got my fork, got my spoon. So basically you just put the four eggs into the flour and mix it up. I'll fast forward through this part. All right, so as you mix, you add a little bit more flour. You just want to make sure that you cut it up here with the cutter. Once you get all that flour mixed in, then you basically just want to knead it into a ball with your hands. Now, I have already put in at this point a tablespoon of the tomato pesto. Uh, which will make a red type of lasagna noodle. You can use basil as well if you want to. And just keep working it. Again, I'll fast forward to the uh, the end of this, but just wanted to show cutting it all up and basically get it kneaded into a ball. And once you hand work it, you can tell it's ready to go into the uh, refrigerator for 30 minutes to rest. When you can push it down and it wants to kind of knead back a little bit, uh, so I just take some saran wrap here, make sure it's completely covered. You don't want to dry it out here. I was just measuring where to cut the saran wrap. And then uh, stick this in the oven for about 30 minutes. So I start working on the rest of the recipe while I'm doing this. All right, at this point in the video, I'll talk a little bit about the ingredients. So I use the La San Marzano sauce. You can use the roasted garlic. You can use just the regular marinara. Uh, this is about $14 a jar for 28 ounces or 24 ounces, 24 ounces. On Amazon, uh, we can get it locally for about $12 a jar, but that's one of the secret ingredients. And then I've got a 28 ounce can of crushed tomatoes here, all purpose. Uh, I like to get them crushed because at some point you have to do that. And then we've got uh, an onion here. And there's some other se seasonings that I put in here. Um, that I'll talk about as I actually add them into the recipe. They're included in the splash screen at the beginning of the video and I'll list the full ingredients and everything obviously but just wanted to talk about these sauces because this is really one of the things that make this lasagna so good and uh, highly recommend this. It's expensive you could use ragu or prego or Newman's or some other uh, but when I'm doing a special uh, lasagna like for Thanksgiving dinner I splurge and go a little bit more expensive on the sauces, but it's well worth it. These also blend well together. If you wanted to not use the crushed tomatoes and use the uh, marinara and roasted garlic sauce together, that's another option. So giving you some choices, but make sure you use this brand if you want to go all out. All right, at this point, uh, I'm going to use half of this onion. I'm not a big onion fan. Um, but you basically just cut it and I'll go to the sink here and peel the outer pieces off but I'm going to use half of what is a Spanish onion and use whatever kind of onion you want I'll throw away those pieces over there but basically you're just going to chop it up and put it in. I've got the meat uh, it's a pound of ground meat and that's starting to brown over here in my skillet 
Um, and you can see I've got some white wine, I've got some uh, different Italian seasoning, some garlic salt, some Tony Sacheries, and then the different sauces, obviously. Um, I, I like to cut these uh, onions up into small cubes and then I use my favorite kitchen tool, the slap chopper. All right, at this point we're browning the meat and I like to chop it up. I've got my skillet set at about 200 degrees. And over time, sometimes I'll actually use the slap chopper on the, on the meat uh, where I'll, I'll cook it in the Instapot and then I'll move it into the skillet to finish browning it together with the onions. Uh, but I'm just breaking it apart here with a spatula to make sure it gets nice and uh, browned. And I'll fast forward to the next uh, secret ingredient here. All right, walking back over here with one of the secret ingredients, the Worcestershire sauce, say that fast. And I like to put this in when I'm browning the meat. Uh, I do this a lot when I'm browning any kind of ground meat, actually, no matter what I'm making, tacos or Italian. Just gives a little bit extra zing. Uh, so I throw that in there, continue to brown it. And then the next secret ingredient, I'll fast forward to that one here in a sec. All right, so the next ingredient is ready. It's not so much a secret ingredient, but it's a half a cup of white wine. Doesn't really matter. Uh, but once the meat is brown and the uh, onions are nice and sautéed and browned together with that Worcestershire sauce, um, basically you'll add in the white wine. And when you put it in, you're going to simmer it, keep it on about 200, and you're going to simmer it down to where basically you cook off all of the white wine. So I'll show that step here in a sec. All right, so we add that white wine in there. And again, let that simmer down. you notice I got milk out. That'll be the next uh, really kind of process, if you will. But this is a Weber's Gourmet Burger Seasoning. It's almost like a Southwest Chipotle feel to it almost. Um, so I'm going to pop this out. I put one teaspoon of this. It's a heaping teaspoon. I can't get it in there, but so I just pour it out in there. So it kind of overspills. So you're not really being scientific with the amount of measurements for this recipe. I don't do that with anything. I always just kind of season them to taste as I go. But you can see one teaspoon of that. So that's another one of those secret ingredients. Uh, we'll add the final, what is you know no longer secret ingredient, the Tony Sachery is here in a little bit. Uh, but add that in while it's browning and as you're um, cooking off that white wine. All right, and you can see here we've got the milk. This is whole milk. Well, it's actually skim milk, but it says whole milk. Um, you want to put a cup of that in there and again you're just going to stir this in and let this simmer down. The key is you don't want to do this on a high heat, more of a medium heat. Uh, the difference between the acid and the base between the milk and the wine are what help make those fats all kind of congeal together in the flavor. Uh, so that's really the process for the browning at this point. So we'll fast forward to adding the uh, sauces and, and the tomatoes next. All right, so we're putting in the 28 ounce can of crushed tomatoes. And uh, for this particular recipe tonight, I'm gonna use the roasted garlic sauce. I didn't use the marinara, but as I mentioned, you could use these together, uh, the, the marinara or the garlic sauce, or you can do the crushed tomatoes. It's really up to you. You could just do all crushed tomatoes if you want, but that's a 28 ounce can of crushed tomatoes. And I add it with the 24 ounce jar of roasted garlic. And so stir all that in and add the next jar and let this simmer uh, for a while. I, I let it simmer while I go through all the next steps. All right, so all the red sauce is in. Now for a few more seasonings here. Now this is a local brand supermarket, uh, but it's just Italian seasoning. You could use the Mrs. Dash, which I'll talk about in a second, but this is just Italian seasoning. It's just a blend. And again, I'm using a tablespoon of this. You know, just again, not being too scientific here. Just add that in. I like the Mrs. Dash 
Italian seasoning as well as an option. And again, we go for the uh, garlic sauce or garlic salt correction. Um, basically, this is just probably a teaspoon, a little more than a teaspoon, just kind of wing it. Nothing scientific again. And then here's another one of the secret ingredients, some Tony Sacheries. And normally I would add more, uh, but you know, I don't live in the South anymore and my family and friends don't like it as hot as I do. Uh, so I put one teaspoon. Normally I'd put probably a tablespoon, but you can add as much or little as you want and that gives it a little extra kick, gives it a little bit of heat. All right, here's another ingredient. This is sugar. So again, this is a teaspoon, two half teaspoons, but one full teaspoon. And what that does is it takes a little bit of that acid out of the tomato, it takes a little kick off. Um, so add that in, stir it all up, and now really it's just let it all simmer together and it's gonna simmer for a while, um, over an hour, about an hour and a half. Um, stirring it occasionally, you don't want it to burn. This is on a pretty low heat, uh, but you just want it to all come together. All right, now we're on to making the uh, lasagna noodles. So I have a plate. You're going to cut the dough into four individual equal parts. So take it off my saran wrap there, get my blade and cut it. And so I put a little flour on my plate off to the side here. And I'm not going to go through this whole process, but you can see I've got the sauce down on the end simmering. I've got my pasta dryer hanging rack sitting there and my pasta roller ready to go. So we'll just roll these out and feed them through the pasta maker and I'll do a couple of jump cuts through that. Really not too much to say here about rolling out pasta. I cut it, uh, I run it through my pasta roller first at zero, which is the thickest setting. Do that a couple times. Then I'll run it back through twice on four, which is the thickness I like here, and then I just hang it to dry. Um, so the key is you just don't want to be too aggressive with it, and I make all the pasta in some different shapes and sizes here. All right, at this point, got the pasta hanging, and over on the stove, and I'll show a picture of it, I've got some wax paper I used to transfer uh, back and forth to the stove, but I got a pot of boiling water with a little bit of salt and oil in it and I've got an oiled cookie sheet uh, with these extra sheets of uh, baker's paper basically so that they don't stick and I'll move them back and forth now the other nice thing is I stir my sauce here you only have to uh, boil these noodles for about a minute and a half and uh, I'll put a picture of what that looks like on the stove here just a quick shot here of the workflow. So I've got the noodles boiling and I put them out over on these sheets. Um, the base layer there is an oiled cookie sheet. And then I put uh, wax paper in between them so they don't stick together. And again, just do a few different shapes and sizes here. And uh, once those are all done, then we can start putting everything together. All right, so here we are getting ready to put it all together. So I've got mozzarella cheese, I've got my two Pyrex dishes that I'm going to put it into, all the different uh, boiled lasagna noodles. So it's really kind of the final, final put together piece here. So got all my different size noodles. I got some scissors here in case I need to uh, trim those down as needed and the uh, sauce is ready to go. So I'll start putting it all together. All right, just uh, starting to layer this, get some stuff out of the way here so we can Put the sauce in. Now, if I had bechamel, which I didn't do for this particular day, I would have put it down first, but I've got a little bit of anti-stick spray in there. Put the noodles down, put the red sauce in, and this recipe will make enough for both of these uh, Pyrex dishes to be full. So a 9 by 13 and an 8 by 8. So basically, just spread the sauce around. This is not rocket science here. Um, I'll, I'll do this fully narrated for the first part here, and then I'll jump cut to the end, um, put it in, get my mozzarella, spread it out in here, and then just build your layers. Um, you could use provolone and parmesan. Provolone and parmesan is not quite as runny. 
mozzarella is going to make it kind of wet so it needs to sit after it's baked go for the next layer of noodles and on and on we'll uh, we'll jump cut here to the, when it's ready to go in the oven all right into the magic of editing here we'll speed up this process again just layering everything cheese noodles sauce cheese that one's done and again no stick spray put the noodles down sauce cheese noodle sauce cheese is uh, how it's gonna end up now I had a few extra noodles here at the end but I used every bit of that red sauce it's too good now depending on how much you make if I if I weren't gonna make the two pans worth I would have done uh, the 9 by 13 and then I had some leftover which makes really good spaghetti sauce if you end up with leftovers uh, but basically just get that done now as far as cooking uh, there's different schools of thought I like to do 350 so preheat the oven to 350 I do like to put a foil tent over it uh, 45 minutes total cook time and for the last 10 minutes you want to take the foil off so it can help brown the cheese and I always leave the mozzarella cheese layer on top and then I like to let it rest after that for a while it certainly is better the next day it seems like all pasta once it's all cooked together is better the second day uh, but basically you're all set there so that was two pounds mozzarella cheese between the two I didn't need the extra and had a few uh, leftover noodles I just ended up throwing those away uh, made a pretty good amount there um, certainly can't wait to eat this getting ready to go put it in the oven here in a few seconds